Hey, 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 Seattle Mariner news, some real news, some significant news. Some might even call it big news. I know I'm a little late here. I know this all went down about 24 hours ago, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about it anyway because this is a pretty big deal, especially with what DePoto has been saying recently about his plans this offseason, which we'll talk about a little later. But uh, the headline here is the Mariners have made another trade. They have made a trade with the Milwaukee Brewers, acquiring Colton Wong, second baseman, in exchange for outfielder slash DH Jesse Winker and utility player Abraham Toro. So, again, the Mariners choose to make a trade for a player who's not going to be super expensive instead of giving a contract offer that would be massive to a free agent. So, clearly, that is the strategy at play here. So... First, let me, well, let me go ahead and address that first, because um, that's going to be the kind of downside of a trade like this, right? Because Colton Wong, a good player, means that you're not getting Xander, you're not getting, um, you're not getting Crawford, uh, I'm sorry, not Crawford, but you're not getting uh, Carlos Correa, you're not getting these other superstar middle infielders. You, you could have had an opportunity to get an elite bat an elite middle infielder in this offseason, and instead you've gone for somebody who can be very good, can be a really special player, but is not the slam dunk that a guy like Xander or Correa would have been. So some people are not going to be thrilled about that, and I will say, if you listen to what DePoto's been saying recently, it's a little bit concerning. He's basically saying... We don't want to overextend ourselves cap-wise when now is the time. I mean, I can understand that mentality last year, the year before, the year before that, but we're talking about a window here. You've got this window where you have maybe, I don't know if he's the best center fielder, but he probably will be in a couple years, and you have maybe the best catcher in baseball. You have these things. You have this great pitching rotation, most of whom are still under club control for a few years. This seems to be the window to go out and spend and maybe splurge on a big-time free agent, but DePoto basically said, I don't think we're going to do that right now. And that is concerning. That makes you afraid, maybe, that the team values their, you know, their budget over trying to build a championship contender. And at the end of the day, you look at it, the Astros get Abreu, the Rangers get um, DeGrom, and we get Colton Wong. There is something a little underwhelming about that when you're looking at your division rivals, knowing that you need to catch the Astros, knowing that you need to stave off a team like the Rangers and the Angels, and you see, you see what those teams are doing, and yes, Colton Wong doesn't really stack up to a guy like Abreu, certainly not to a guy like DeGrom. I understand that. But let's evaluate this trade in a vacuum, just focusing on the player. So Colton Wong, um, he's a second baseman, has been basically his whole career. So you don't have to move Crawford, which is something that we really cared about. And he has been a very valuable player in his career. He is 32 now. He's 32. He just turned 32 a couple months ago. Not ideal. We would prefer a younger player. 32 is the age when you do see players sometimes start to drop off, there's definitely some concern there, but 32 is also not an age where the big warning signs are flashing yet. So odds are good that this guy is going to be good for at least a little while longer, and we probably only need him for a little while longer. So <clears throat> the upshot here, Colton Wong is coming off probably his best year ever at the plate. In fact, I think it's his best year ever at the plate by a pretty wide margin. As you can see, his Ops Plus is 118 in 2022. Now, some of that is because batting across the league was not up to its usual standard. You can actually see that his batting average was not particularly high. It was higher in previous years. But because the entire league's offenses were struggling along, it was 18% above average. That's significant. He, um, he, you can see how he managed to put it together. He had a little more power than he usually does. He hit 15 home runs, not a ton, but not an insignificant amount either. 
and that allowed him to boost his Ops Plus up a little bit. He was able to have a little bit of gap power, hit 24 doubles in 134 games. Not amazing, but when you look at what Colton Wong has been over the last few years of his career, uh, two years in Milwaukee most notably, but also a little bit before that in St. Louis, he is basically a better version of Adam Frazier in every sense of the word. He is a largely uh, singles hitter, I guess I should say, somebody who's going to get on base but not give you a ton of power, but he gives you more power than Frazier. Frazier had very little pop in his bat. Um, I think he had like four home runs last year, and I know one of them was one of the weirdest home runs I've ever seen in my life. I swear to God he popped it up about a 130 feet from home plate, and it just kept going. Colton Wong can do a little bit better than that. Colton Wong is going to give you a little bit more as an extra base hitter compared to a guy like Frazier. So you you now don't have to bring back Frazier. He's now gone, and you're replacing him with basically a better version of Adam Frazier. He's a little bit faster. He's a little more able to steal bases. You can see over the last two years, he has about 30 stolen bases. Not a ton, but not a trivial amount either. That That's helping your team. That's helping manufacture runs. So this guy is also has a reputation of being a good fielder. He's won two gold gloves. Now, in 2022, his fielding did drop off significantly. If you actually go down and look at his uh, standard fielding numbers, you'll see that he was a plus defender for several years at second base. And last year was the first year in a while he became a negative player at second base. So that could be an aberration. That could be a one-year down slide thing. But he is getting older, so it's possible we're buying in on Colton Wong at the wrong time. I'm not denying that that is a possibility. But over his career, he's generally been a very good defensive player. Last year, he had 17 errors, which I believe led the National League at second base, which that's uncharacteristic of his career previously. <coughs> so hopefully he can get back to the form that won him those two gold gloves in 2019 and 2020 for the Cardinals. And there's no way he's going to be worse than Frazier in the field. Frazier's defense at second base was especially heinous. And I believe Wong is going to be, at the minimum, a significant upgrade on um, on defense. So we're getting that out of the deal, which is big. And I believe we're also getting a better bat. I mean, this, this Ops Plus speaks for itself. Frazier's was, what, 81, 82? Something like that. It, it wasn't good because he had no power and he wasn't really hitting for average either. So if, if you look over the course of Wong's career... You'll see that he's been above, noticeably above average at the plate in four of the last six years. One year he was basically average, slightly below average, but right around there. And the one year he was noticeably below average was the COVID year when he only played 53 games. So this is an above average hitter. He's been his whole career. Now, the one warning I will put out there, he's been in the NL his entire career. He's never played in the AL there is a transition players have to make. Winker, who is the guy we traded, actually, ironically enough, struggled to make that transition, which is part of the reason why he's gone right now. So it would not be shocking if Colton Wong came here and didn't play great, especially at first, while he's adjusting. We can hope that by the end of the year he's adjusted, but I would definitely be prepared for Colton Wong to be more around league average level at the plate at first. Okay, so now let's quickly talk about the guys we gave up. There's not much to say. We actually did a pretty good job not giving up any young pieces, any, you know, uh, farm system pieces. We did a pretty good job only getting rid of two veteran players that it seemed like we were pretty much done with. So, Winker, here's what I'm going to say. Um, if Jesse Winker had come back in 2023, I believe that he would have had a big bounce back year and played much better. I believe that. I really do. I think that if you take a look at what he did in Cincinnati over in the NL, I think if you take a look at the way players sometimes have a hard time adjusting from the NL to the AL, it made sense that Winker would get back out there in 2020, uh, 2023 
and be a much better player. This guy was an all-star last year, 143 ops plus, hit for over 300, hitting right around 300 in several of his initial MLB seasons. Um, good power. Uh, he, he was able to hit 24 home runs the previous year. In 2022, he did struggle. I know people were sick of him. I understand. But the thing to remember is, even with all those things going on there, even with his 219 batting average, his batting eye was so good. His ability to draw walks and work pitch counts was so good, he still had an above average ops plus. And I think people dismiss that as not being of value. It is. He was our best pitch count worker. He was our best. Um, he was our. He had. He had the best batting eye on the team last year. He was the guy who could absolutely work a pitch count, draw a walk, and find a way to get on base, even when he wasn't swinging the bat super well. <clears throat> yes, he was frustrating. Yes, he was a disaster in the outfield. There's no doubt the injury had something to do with that. But I do believe that Jesse Winker is likely going to have a bounce back year in 2023 with the Brewers. But I am aware that there were things going on off the field that weren't working. Wasn't working with this team. Teammates didn't appreciate the way he went about things. Um, the organization seemed to sour on him a little bit. And that's how you get to where we are with him right now, where he's not on the team anymore. I can't completely dismiss that factor. So I understand it. But I do believe he's going to go to Milwaukee and play much better, going back to the NL where he's played his whole career. Maybe there will be an adjustment back. I don't know. But it seems to me that Jesse Winker could use this change of scenery. So I understand it had to happen because of the stuff off the field, which I'm not going to get into. But I really liked Winker, and I believe he will be a really good player again. Abraham Toro, I don't have very much to say about. I mean, it was exciting at first. It was intriguing. He's obviously still relatively young. He's about to turn 26, but I mean, we are talking about a guy who batted 185 in 2022. The dude actually had half decent power. He had 100 home runs and his ops plus was still scraped, not even the bottom of the barrel. He went through the bottom of the barrel. He was okay in the field, I guess. He was pretty good at second base, but he played a little third base. That wasn't working. So he was a utility player, but at the end of the day, was he really giving you good utility play? Probably not. There was that one magical two-month stretch when he first got here from Houston where he was blowing the cover off the ball, but that fell off, and ever since then, he's been a well below average, like downright bad batter and forgettable in the field. And he had a negative war in 2022 for a reason. So ultimately, we traded a player who had negative 0.8 war in 2022 and a player who had negative 0.3 war in 2022. And we got a player who had a positive 3.1 war in 2022. You cannot say that's a bad trade. So this fills the needed second base. So there will be no slam dunk. But this is a perfectly adequate signing that should make this team better. Is it going to make the team better than Houston? I'm dubious. But not a lot of things you can do are going to make you better than Houston. They're the best team in the league, and they might have gotten better. I'm not convinced, but it's possible. Now, if you look at the way this team is set up now, they're, they're good, right? They patched the hole in the corner outfield. They patched the hole at second base. They're good. But I think we're going to need a little bit more, especially given what Houston has done and now what Texas has done. So I'm looking at it. I'm trying to figure this out. Do you get another corner outfielder? Because that's where the hole is now. Or do you just let that corner outfield spot be manned by like four different guys from day to day? There are guys out there, but they're going to cost money. And there seems to be some real hesitancy on the part of this GM um, um, GM to uh, spend big money. So I don't know if it's going to happen. But we have our second baseman. He's a plus hitter. Most of his career, he's been a plus fielder. That's a big upgrade over Frazier, who was a minus in both categories, basically his whole time here. All right, I'll see you guys later. Go Mariners. Good trade. I like the trade, but it's not really putting yourself 
in line with competing for the Houston Astros in the division.